Okay, so this first video is going to be about constant acceleration. And really the first thing we have to talk about is this idea of acceleration. What is acceleration? Well, you guys might uh, have a little bit of experience with this already. You can probably say that acceleration is either speeding up or slowing down. But the most general f definition of acceleration is really just a change in speed, change in, in velocity, actually, because we can take direction into a case or into account, change in velocity over some amount of time, change in time. Okay? So that way, if we wanted to actually calculate what acceleration is, acceleration is equal to change in velocity over change in time. Now, with that velocity, that especially the change in velocity, the change in velocity can happen in either way. It can happen as an increase or it can happen as a decrease. So the increase, you know, we would usually call as a positive value. The decrease we would call it as a negative value. So acceleration can be positive or negative. Uh, now time, on the other hand, can really only be positive, right? Time is just uh, continuing to go forward, so it can only be a positive. Or a change in time can only be a positive. So let's talk about uh, what a change in velocity would look like. All right. So first off, we have this car. Okay, there's a car, box on wheels, right? Got a steering wheel in there, and he starts off at what we say a rest. So his velocity is equal to zero. Okay, he pushes down on the gas pedal, starts to go forward, and we're going to call that direction a positive direction. And sometime later, he's down here box on wheels, and now his velocity is, let's say, 10 meters a second. And how long did it take to do that? Well, it took, let's say, uh, make our life a little bit easier, let's say it take five seconds to do that. So his acceleration would be change in velocity over change in time, which remember to do a change in, we always have to do final minus initial, so that's 10 meters per second minus zero meters per second over five seconds. So I know that 10 divided by 5 is 2, so we have 2 meters per second per second. Okay, so that we have the unit of meters per second up here on the top from the velocity, and then the seconds down here uh, on the bottom from the time. So a meter per second per second is the unit for acceleration. That can also be written as a meter per second squared. Okay, both of those are the exact same thing. We tend to like this one a little bit better just because uh, it's a, just easier to write, meter per second squared. Okay, well, but this whole unit is really about graphing this, so let's try to graph this. And uh, for acceleration versus time, we know that the velocity, or excuse me, that the velocity is changing when we're talking about acceleration. So let's start off with a velocity versus time graph. So here's a velocity versus time graph. Okay. So we start us off at zero, at time zero, and then sometime later, what do we say, five seconds later, he's up here at 10 meters per second. Okay, there's our dot. Okay, there we go. So there we go, velocity is, uh, velocity over time, here's our, here's our graph. So if it really does look like this, then what would we say would be the speed at 10 seconds? Okay, there's our question. What is his velocity or what is his speed at 10 seconds? Well, if he goes up to 10 meters per second in 5 seconds, if we were just to carry on that graph, then where would he be at 10 seconds? Well, that he would probably be way up here at about 20 meters per second. So for every second, this car, this truck, whatever it is, is changing its speed by 2 meters per second. Okay, so after 5 seconds it's up to 10 meters per second, after 20 meters per second, or excuse me, at 10 seconds it's up at 20 meters per second. So a constant velocity on a velocity versus time graph looks like a linear line. Okay, it's changing by 2 meters per second every second, so you can say that the slope is 2 meters per second per second. Okay, changing 2 meters per second on the y-axis for every second on the x-axis. And that is your 
acceleration. Okay, so in this case, acceleration is slope. All right, well, let's see what that would look like on a distance versus time or a position versus time graph. Okay, so just remember that you can always pause and go back, uh, rewind, rewatch all this stuff if you need to. All right, so we're going to do a position versus time graph. There's position, here's time. This is measured in meters, this one's measured in seconds. Okay, I'm going to put 5 seconds here. I'm going to put 10 seconds down here. Alright. Well, we know that as the car sped up, to start off at 0, okay, 0 meters per second. That's going to be sitting down here at the origin. And 5 seconds later, he's going 10 meters per second. Okay. Well, I can't really plot that on the graph at, you know, here at 10 because he's not going the same speed throughout the entire five seconds. So let's take it one second at a time. Okay, one second at a time, he maybe traveled this amount of distance. Okay, after two seconds, maybe he's traveled this amount of distance. Three seconds, he's traveled this amount of distance. Four seconds, he's traveled this amount of distance. Five seconds, he's traveled this amount of distance. Okay, why is the distance away from origin changing? We're getting more and more and more. Well, for one, we know that we're, we're measuring from the origin. We're measuring from the place that we called zero meters. So after every second, he is getting further and further away. So that way, it's going to just keep going higher and higher on this position graph. But we also know that the change between seconds also needs to be a little bit more each time because he's traveling faster. So if we were to connect this, we would actually see that it curves. Okay, So if something is what we would say accelerating or has an acceleration to it then we get a nice little curve on a position versus time graph okay it's always going to be the case we get a curve now the curve might not always be like this though this is going to be something where we have a positive acceleration where he's speeding up and okay, we're also saying that this has got a positive velocity he keeps going in the positive direction so Think about what we had discussed in class about positive velocity and positive position and what that actually means. Here we're going to have positive and uh, negative acceleration with respect to velocity. Okay. Well, let's take a look at one other example. What if he stops speeding up and now he's going to start slowing down? So we say that the car starts off at 10 meters per second. Okay. And as he goes on, after five seconds, maybe he's come down to a stop. So now he's at zero meters per second. Okay, What would that look like on a velocity versus time graph? Well, at zero, he would have to be up here at 10 meters per second. After five seconds, he's way down here at zero meters per second. So now we have, again, linear line when it comes off of velocity. But now the slope, which is a, uh, the, what the acceleration is, let's calculate what it would be. Acceleration being change in velocity over change in time. Remember, it's final minus initial, 0 minus 10 meters per second over 5 seconds. That gives us a negative 2 meters per second per second acceleration. Okay, that's the reason why the slope goes down. Okay, it's a decreasing slope. So we have a negative acceleration, and we have a positive velocity. Okay, what does that mean? Well, it means that this guy is slowing down. All right, what would that look like on a position versus time graph? All right, that'll be the last thing we do. Okay, position versus time. Well, if we're starting in Mozilla at zero, then in the first second or so, he's going to cover a lot of distance. In the second second, not as much distance. The third second, not as much distance. The fourth second, not as much distance fifth second, now all of a sudden he's not covering anything at all because he's stopped. Okay, we got this curve again, but the curve is now opening downward instead of opening upward. Okay, so if we have a positive velocity with a negative acceleration, then this is an instance where we are slowing down. All right. We could go all the way back to this instance right here where we have a positive velocity and a positive acceleration. This is talking about a speeding up. Okay, 
So again, we have to think about positives and positives. Hey, we got speeding up, positive and negative. Now we're sitting here slowing down. Okay, we'll be talking about constant acceleration later in the week.